Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just decolonize you. Welcome to The Advocate and to a heady mix of hair matter, hero matter, house assembly matter, hustle matter, and she, he matter. In case that's too crude for you, allow me to break it down. Kicking off today's program, I'll be wading in with both feet and taking on the phobia to sporting Afro kinky hair. That's amongst black women anyway. Jide Martins, our guest advocate all the way from Comic Republic, comes to tell us that we need black superheroes. I can even hear the theme tune in my head. Liberals is holding on to a bone of contention and squarely facing the House of Assembly on this one. Are they even nationals? He asks. Ekene says too much hustle is going to our heads. We are forgetting the stuff of real life. I imagine she'll remind us what that is. Treasure is putting her mouth where her allegiance is. She is a feminist and proud. She'll be asking, why aren't we all? I say ask and you'll find out. You won't have to wait too long after the break. I've never accepted there were areas that are out of bounds. So just say, don't go there, and it's like waving a red flag to a bull. So natural hair, no man, don't go there. It was not too long ago that I posted on Facebook, why do black ladies say it's high maintenance to sport natural hair? Is it not comb, shampoo, and oil? There were 55 comments, not much, but one said to quote, no man, don't go there. It appeared that most of the women came to defend the other side, that where artificial hair is somehow grafted or worn as wigs. These artificial accessories are usually imported from South America and in most cases are actually not artificial, having been shaved off ladies in Brazil, Peru or Asia. Now that the look of these attachments is definitely not native curly black, begs the question, are our ladies insecure about ours? and see that which the white woman, among others, has naturally as more beautiful and sophisticated. The overriding argument has been that it takes too much time, effort and money to manage our type. I do not quite agree. Perhaps there is still some other states that our sisters feel is the natural they want to keep that is expensive, which means bottom line, they do not want to go natural. It has gotten to a point where our ladies come of age and cannot wait to start to play with attachments. But we have also begun to see the renaissance of the natural, of the Afro. This is related to that contemporary drive to reassert the black Afrocentric mindset. And what a thing of joy and special beauty. Offices, even in Lagos, banks especially, frown at natural black hair. On ladies. But now the state of California in the US has just passed a law against discrimination of black natural hair in the place of work and schools. New York will soon sign the same law. This is in America. When exactly will Africa sign her own laws for her own daughters? At the moment, perhaps only the creative sector accepts and even prefers the natural. Chika, Chika that... I love your, your daring. <laughs> I read your post on um, Facebook and I was, I was impressed how you held your own because <laughs> you weren't making any friends. Um, but just to say very quickly, you know, th there's two sides to this. Uh -huh. Of course, I love natural hair. You know, I love my Afro. I can't imagine if I didn't have my Afro. Um, I've always loved the natural, more African styles. Um, but I mean, my own mind is that everyone should be allowed 
to have choice. Because one of the beauty, beauty I say, well, the best part of being a black woman is that the hair, our hair is so versatile. You can do so much with it. So I've never been an advocate of in, imposing one option, even if I felt that option was a good one. I always feel that that ability to choose is still something that is intrinsic to being a human being. So I will never demonize anyone. Because mm -hmm. I, when, I, when I read some articles where black men were really making women feel like they were mad, they were insane because they wanted to put, you know, by the time they finished, and I've met some really combative women, black women, who, will, you know, they won't even talk to you because you're wearing a weave on. And I'm like, why are you getting so distracted by these externals? You know, because they've judged you based on that choice you've made. A life can't be like that. So mm -hmm. the fact that it represents one thing to you doesn't mean you should assume it represents that same thing to others. Mm -hmm. You can, you can encourage people to spot their natural hair. Like mm -hmm. when we had the heat that recently, some women were happy to say that they finally took off their weave because the heat was too hot for them to wear weave. And, you know, because they were, so I like the fact that you're encouraging women they to did. enjoy. Yeah, they had to. They had to do yeah. Diddy or whatever they had yeah. to do and walk out and let the wind blow on their brain. Okay. Because it was too much for them. Okay. For me, oh, for me. I, I yeah, let the brain feel I some wind, brain drier. <laughs> <laughs> I like the fact that you talked about a renaissance of, of Afro hair. I mean, when I was growing up, we used to have this straightening comb that, mm -hmm. you know, yes, mm -hmm. yes. was applied on your hair. Yes. And it was, yes, for weddings and mm -hmm. more. And um, yes, Chimamanda brought it back in a way. With oh. uh, in our in our last book, mm. I have been wearing um, natural hair since 2012. Right. But I wear wigs. Yes. Why? Because it's high maintenance, really. Uh, Not I many don't salons. Agree that it no. Is. Let me make a point. Not many salons know how to manage your hair. I'm taking my hair to some salons that my head literally pulls. It pulls. So you have almost all of this place. This this the edges. Seating. Falling off. Okay. So there has to be a way okay. to manage yeah. it. Do you yeah. understand? Yeah. So I do all back and I put on a wig. And there are a lot of women who do that. So the fact that someone is wearing a wig doesn't mean that that person doesn't, doesn't have it's actually like a hair. Yes, or is yes. it oh, it's ashamed I, of I, it. Or is ashamed I, of I, it. I'm not ashamed of it. I, I'm pro global community, right? And we keep saying, oh, um, let's do this this way and not this way. And I'm like, okay, so why are we fighting for any kind of freedom or right or one way at all? I think people in general should do what suits them and what makes them happy. So for example, I know for a fact that when the weather is really cold, and we must admit that we have black women everywhere around the world, right? Wow. When you leave your hair out, it starts to drop off, right? And so you can't tell women who would lose their hair because of the extreme cold to carry an afro in that kind of weather. And if they don't, as black women, people who, are, who stereotype will say, you're not pushing your culture, but simply just doesn't make sense based on the circumstances at that point in time. Finally, I think we should you know, embrace a mix of different cultures to breed one world. Right, so that you can see another person's culture, and if you feel like adopting it, uh, to you adopt, shouldn't be stereotyped. To adopt for doing your that. position, okay, that's, that's to adopt your position, there. you cannot, you cannot um, uh, force somebody to accept yours. Except first and foremost, you have to defend it and stand tall with it. You first have to appreciate it. it. Yeah, paraphrasing your position, and and so in the same vein, yes, we agree. Um, uh, the, world is depend, a the world is a global village depending on where you are. But this idea of everything white is better and more beautiful than that. No, that is wrong. Yes, that's, that's, that's what we're trying to reverse. That's that is point. why. No, that's the point. That's, yes, yes, it is. That's, it why, is. that's why first they and don't foremost, want it in the office. You have to for heighten. You have, you have to, to do to a law heighten, that permit. You have to heighten that which is, you know, that black natural eye. And like I always ask, I'm not a woman though. Is it not home? <laughs> And Vaseline. No, mm. it's not. So it is can be the only brush. It can be. It can be. It can be. We know why we're putting ourselves through all these rituals. I, 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 I wash my hair myself. I wash my hair myself. What did you just say? Coconut oil. Coconut oil. Coconut oil. Shea butter. I've seen people who just run a comb through their hair and they're fine and it's natural. But some of them is so coarse you keep. Mine is coarse, but I don't. I refuse to go and submit to the 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 um. What do you call it? the hairdressing salon's version of maintenance. If I wanted to, it would cost me an arm and a leg. Yeah. So I don't go See? to, don't tell you have to moisturize treatment. Yeah. No, I just wash my hair and I put coconut oil in it. In the, the 70s, in the 70s, in the seventies, where guys were carrying Afro, mm. we also know and that, you, you know, you saw, some Did you just say we? Wigs. Some wigs. Some wear wigs. So, yes. We men. I said, we bros, you have to start growing your hair. When men. Yes. 
I used to carry Afro also. You see, you have, I had comb in my back pocket always. Yeah, you, but you had, had to I'm so it, it was a, it was a um, blind um, guy with comb. Yes, with yeah. comb. You put yeah. it at your back pocket yeah. and then you just comb it. And so now when women and, tell me, oh, yes. it's difficult to maintain. You can make and it I was easy. Like, you can make it easy. The challenges of this modern time would not give you the, the, the time. time. Yes. You have to wake but up. But you know what people need Lagos. to do with weave? They need you to tongue to, it. They need to uh -uh. make it. You still yes, need to style it. You wake up in the morning with all the traffic in Lagos. You now want to spend how many hours combing your hair? You can style the weave. In between washing yeah. and drying mm. and styling, how long does that take? <laughs> No, 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 do it like a man. It Just can't even, can't even, can't even do it like a man. Yes, yes. Even you say I you're have a problem for natural, with that na sentence. natural air. And yet you go sit down, you want breeze. And yet you go sit down on that, you know, a dryer of, you know, more than 100, 100 degrees centigrade. Have you been under the dryer? Yes, I have. I used to work in it. I used to own a salon. Libros has done everything in the world. I'm a hustler. To... I'm a hustler. In no, 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 but let, let's be honest, though. Let's be honest with ourselves. Women are ready to endure a lot in the name of beauty. That's the reason it. they don't endure for Afro hair is because they're not convinced it's touch enough yet. Fantastic. Oh, the minute they believe no. it's touch yes. enough, yes. Yes. I will, will put up it. with whatever you I don't agree with you. I was just going to talk about the alternative. If you check it out these days, you find... Um, this hairstyles that you use natural weave for, I do it. Mm. Maybe I should just spot it on this show one of these days. Please bring and it. And this is this is what has become Chimamanda's. Yes, it's, it's, it's um, green. Now. Um, Which one? Brand. Yes. Yeah. You, uh, no, it's, it's not it's natural looking. It's hair. natural. But it's extensions. Looking, it's extension. Okay, okay. It's uh -huh, extension round. That's natural. And it's really nice. I, I wear it. Yeah, yeah. It's really no, no, that's just. I, I, I did that, mention that, that, they want, that I did mention that we seem to choose the ones. I want to say that. The hair growing up, as growing up also in the village. Uh, you had ours. You that had is. that all back you're talking about. We had chuku. The Conro, yeah. We had chuku. We had uh, all back. Well, which one no. is we had? Wait now. And the village. In the village <laughs> then. From and, the village and then it wasn't expensive to maintain. Yeah. That's what I, I don't yeah. know where yeah. with palm canne oil. Palm canne oil. I believe I, I completely okay, agree I with Ekene. Ekene. Because you know, they see we, women do not still believe that not, you know that is sophisticated, it's sophisticated enough. enough. Yeah. Because women can endure the most mm. unbearable condition High provided. Heels. Thank you very much for, 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 for saying that. But what yes. about the men? They are complicit in this. Yeah. Yes, men are yeah, also one men yeah. They actually yeah. want women in weave. Can we call natural hair extensions natural hair? Technically, uh, that's fine. Yeah. Technically, because that's fine. Because he's promoting the image of because it's being the, proud so it's of just being the black. image that we're so looking blackness. for. Well, if put it this way, if you can get the image that way, it's, I can't. I mean, I can't go around policing you. It must be your. But there are many you know women what I mean? carrying that at the this. moment. So we're not pushing natural hair. We're pushing natural hair look. Well, we're pushing concerned about the interior. Well, I'm actually push, well, I'm well, pushing <laughs> natural hair. Sorry, I am pushing. But I might have to push the image first. What I am pushing to take your position. If you are if you are viewed from a substandard position, yeah. you will have to elevate your standard first to, mm. be to, to be able to come. Yes. And so we need to elevate our own brand Thank of hair, you. whether you natural or but look alike. But the second question and then for us to be able to put it, it out there. <laughs> well, I did and I'm sure I'll be getting my kickback <laughs> from the ladies. Not that sort of kickback. I look forward to it anyway. After the break, Jide is daring to conquer another terrain of superheroes. The best response to the question, why now, can be to turn the question on its head. It is time for the African superhero. From the beginning of time, people have learned of the past through tales that were told to them from those who witnessed the event, and even those who claim that they did. It is often said that history is told from the eyes of the victors. These victors tell tales of cultures that once was from their own perspective, so as to pass their certain beliefs and ideas and values from one generation to the next. America has entrenched itself in the eyes of the world as not only the world's superpower, but the greatest nation on earth. The use of icons in the form of superheroes were essential tools in achieving the above stated effect. Superman, the world's first superhero, appeared to be an advocate for social justice, individualism, and to fight for victims of social factors beyond their control at a time where America was facing depression. While Batman was created at a time in America's history where the Great Depression called for heroes who could set an example by showing how to solve 
big problems in times of crisis and thus demonstrated how to cope with difficult situations. It is amazing how the effect of this American Idol still holds sway till this day. I would argue that one in three people know who Superman and Batman are and would embody the characters that symbolize strength and grit that these heroes show through hope. What most people do not know that most of the extremely popular icons all wear the colors of the American flag. These icons have been so entrenched in us that the word Superman or Wonder Woman symbolize strength, which inevitably says that you are my American icon. Africa is full of icons who have fought for not only our survival as a people, but for our very way of life. Yet, we have not embraced this ancient but effective way of communicating through the concept of superheroes to pass on beliefs and shape the perception of our generation. I hear people say, children of nowadays, Nigeria has no hope. The youths are lazy. Our country is corrupt. We must understand all we are today is a complete combination of our thoughts, traditions, and lessons that we have been passed down and that we have been exposed to. My question is when and how do we cause correct? I say that it is time we create icons for the generation that is coming. Creating heroes that will not only show us the right thing to do, but will also shape and influence their thoughts and decisions in order for them to live better lives. It is time for the African superhero. It is time that we not only show the world what we are capable of, but to teach the next generation who they can be, remembering that the only limit there is, is us. If not now, then when? True, if not now, then when? Mm. Um, we're past the time, even. And so we can only do catching up now. And I completely, absolutely, like um, my brother Bayabo would say, I'm a perfect stimulacrum with your, <laughs> <laughs> with your advocacy. Mm -hmm. and. Um, you know, uh, the generations, um, we can use uh, some of these um, African heroes, superheroes mm. also, you know, to mentor. Um, you see, little children these days want to be Batman, want to be Superman, want to be, you know... Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. You know, but there is no that, you know, African superhero that would come to liberate, you know, Africans or that would fight corruption, for mm -hmm. example. I, I did once challenge you know, the Minister for, Informa for yes, Information and National Orientation. That way people doing in the um, National Orientation Agency. You need to create characters. Do they exist? To be able to also fight Embody corruption. Take for example, ideas. you know, people are, are stealing. Or Boko Haram, and then you have this superhero like Superman, mm. he comes mm. and he, he, you know, you need to create those kind of, and then also it will encourage some persons to say, I want to go join the army, mm. so, you know, to be able to, but, we just sit down and look for how to take money, make money. If you come up with that idea now, you'll be surprised. The, the line of, um, of um, bureaucracy that you okay. will meet okay. oh, will be unimaginable. At the end of the day, somebody will just take your proposal, take it somewhere, they'll collect money and not enough. But you know, about, Bros, sorry, let me quickly on. take mm. you on the National Orientation Agency one. And, and this is, I feel strongly about it. Many times regarding national issues, we'd ask the question, what is the National Orientation Agency doing? Okay. And the question I asked while you were talking was, do they still exist? They exist too. If There's they a budget exist, for them. can we have some innovative leader there? No. Because this is also part Hold of on, what they should do. Yeah. How, you said something, you said the only limit there is, it's is us. us. So yeah. we're the ones limiting ourselves. Yes. You have a national orientation agency, and for years they've still not come up with a plan about or for superheroes of the nation. There is the Queen Amina of where? There Zaria. is the Queen Emoto of where? There is a... Jaja of Apubu. Uh -uh. We do need superheroes now more than ever because this is when people are losing hope. And what superheroes do is it takes you out of the realm of what is possible to imagine what you haven't even conceived of. Because a lot of times when you tell people you can live without bribing, they say, ah, you're not in Nigeria, you're not flesh and blood. So we need to take it out of the realm of flesh and blood mm -hmm. to start portraying ideals. We don't need to wait for government. I know Libros always ah. says we should. <laughs> but if you do, you'll be waiting a long time. Well, yes, yeah. push for government to do their own. But you yourself also recognize the potency of role modeling. 
whether in your own lives, whether in the way you tell stories to your children, find a way to embody those ideals. Don't give up on them. Every country, every institution starts from the family. And I think if all of us take the responsibility, you know, to basically push this message where we consciously want to create icons or look for these icons with people that look like us, right? Because most people don't understand between the age one to five, human beings don't have a personality yet, right? right? The personality forms from everything they have been exposed to. That's why your child will talk like you. That's why your people around you will pick your expressions. But if you can, within that time, influence their thoughts. If you can make a five-year-old believe that a Nigerian is the most faithful, diligent person, and then you go on to repeat that same information between one and 15, you have somebody who is upright. Right. But when we have you know, households that keep talking about Nigeria is bad, the government is corrupt, we must do this, and even we must do that. You know, I'm a Yoruba man, I'm an Igbo man. Mm -hmm. Instead of heroes that come out and say, I will fight no matter who you are, the color of your skin, simply because it is the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. mm. That, that's where the whole generation okay. will change. Yeah, yes, I, yes. I, I think, yes, so I think in the end, truly, I, I like, I, I can see now the superhero thing, because a superhero is different from a hero. A superhero yeah. is, is fictional, comic, you know, yes. that sort of thing. Because I'm of the school of thought that we have no heroes in Nigeria, <laughs> uh, real heroes. So the best yeah, thing that's... is, I now I like how you've come up now that the way we could move ahead is, mm -hmm. and as Ikeni said, we're moving from the normal to a, so, so a sort of other level, other level mm -hmm. where we can just drag people up there and before they know it, they are being made to that, change. That's where I disagree since, with Ikeni. Since we can't change with the normal heroes that yeah. we have. because yeah. That's where I disagree with Ikeni. <laughs> you can only drag from your little environment. You talk about from five years and then you keep repeating. What do you hear your government say consistently? Scale. Your president went mm. abroad and said, Nigerians are corrupt. They are thieves. And, and so, here you hear the government talk about religion, division, and all was not. So it's now we've created from a little end. Government had to take it off from. from, from uh, sorry, from if there. it was down to government, even we here wouldn't be thinking the way we. Yeah, do. but the government. Clearly, government. Scale up on the I know, but government yeah, can't be the same. And they should pick up government on the things the that the individuals do. Doing. They we agree. Pick up on what's comic no, we agree, but I, I can't accept time. that government yes. are the rate limiting factor. Yes. They should do it. I will always insist. That's why we advocate. But they can't if they have taken it from there. You know where we would have been. No, but he's still How doing what he's doing. supporting Jide with what he does. We, we will push for public. that. <laughs> Support me, please. By the well, way, I was just... I, I wanted to curious. just make a slight comment about what you said, right? The thing about heroes, and I just need to throw that out, heroes are not perfect, mm. and icons are not perfect. I do think we have heroes in Nigeria. Some people will not agree. They might have part of their lives because they're human that are not exemplary. But for the things that they've done, we can make them icons and focus on the good things. If you look at American history, they've murdered thousands of people in occupying land and acquiring wealth. But they always only focus on the good side. And I think if we do that on our past heroes, then. Yeah. I hope I got some of you stirred up. And like Chuka, you're hearing the team tune in your head. After the break, Libros is certainly stirred up and seeks to infect the rest of us and even you too. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. That's I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Yeah, for sure, Jide, join the movement. Is it the duty of our National Assembly to make laws to compensate criminality and punish those who abide by the rules? Then one might be tempted to ask if ours is a National Assembly or Assembly of non-nationals. 
These questions became pertinent as when one hears that the National Assembly is proposing a bill to grant amnesty to terrorists and the House of Rep members are buying foreign vehicles in opposition to Nigeria Maid. Are these members oblivious of the prevailing situation in Nigeria? In a country where people can hardly feed with one dollar, that's 362 naira a day, the members of our House of Representatives are going to spend about 5 billion naira buying 400 pieces of 2020 model Toyota Camry at the cost of almost 40 million naira per car. Hmm. We are informed that the members even rejected the locally manufactured innocent vehicles. It is obvious we are there to serve them and they are not to serve us. Even the members representing Innocent constituency couldn't insist that their own vehicles be bought from Innocent Motor. So much for Esprit de Chop. So money meant to develop and enhance our economy. We take flight to foreign land to buy cars. Yet tomorrow, we'll borrow that same money with interest from the same foreign countries to buy more cars and consume more foreign goods. Don't forget, we have closed our land borders to enable us to grow our local industry. Who be fooled? On their part, at the Senate, a bill sponsored by Senator Ibrahim Gedem, a former governor of Yobe State, now a senator, is proposing not just amnesty for Boko Haram, repentant Boko Haram members, but to send them abroad for studies. Yet we say we don't compensate criminality here, as we deal with them decisively, like government will always say. Hmm? The bill which will create a national agency for education, rehabilitation, de-radicalization, and integration of repentant insurgents in Nigeria we get it funding from the Universal Basic Education Commission, that's UBEC, and the Tertiary Education Trust Fund, that's State Fund. With such laws, Boko Haram members will soon begin to scream members. As all you need to do to get rehabilitated and be given foreign scholarship will be to enroll as a member of Boko Haram, repent after one or two months, and boom, you're on your way abroad for studies. Yet, no scholarship for the victim or the students with the highest score in WAIC or JAM. Why won't we be highly spiritual instead of innovative or creative? I don't know whether to laugh or cry. What do we tell the children of the victim who for no fault of theirs have found themselves in overcrowded, internally displaced people's camp because their parents were killed by Boko Haram members? And that the same state that cannot guarantee their parents' safety is busy compensating the killers of their parents with foreign education. Yet we expect such kids not to take up arms against the state tomorrow. We are all a bunch of jokers. What will you tell the parents of Leah Shaibu, or the mother of the abducted school guests in Dapchi, or those from Chibok, majority of whom are still in captivity today, or the parents of the boys slaughtered in their sleep in the secondary school in Buniyadi, that why the states that couldn't bring the killers of their ward and captors of their daughters to book, those arrested by the state are being compensated with salaries and foreign education. Yet a senator sponsored this bill. Make with a fear God, oh. If we are rehabilitating and educating and reintegrating the terrorists, what happened to the victims who are increasing in their numbers by the day? Have they been rehabilitated? Have they no need rehabilitation? How do we dance on the graves of our servicemen and women who have died, some carelessly, in the fight of te against terrorism with such an idea and hope to prosper as a nation or find peace with our conscience and maker? With such ideas, without knowing it, we are gradually building an army of dissidents who will be emboldened to take up arms against the state in no distance time. I would therefore advocate that if our lawmakers don't want Nigerians to see them as strangers, that's assembly of non-nationals, they should not only jettison this ostentatious lifestyle that further fleeces the country, but strive to make laws that would promote unity, equity, welfare, peace and rehabilitation of all Nigerians irrespective of tribe or tongue, because we all need rehabilitation. The average Nigerian should also be aware that the country belongs to all of us and the time to be collectively and genuinely interested in the affairs of the executive, legislature, and judiciary is now. As a little fire you live today can leave you without a little in the near future. A word said in half goes into the wise and becomes a whole. I don't talk my own. That's the wise. Two things I like about what you've talked about, that we all need rehabilitation. I heard you know that. I saw you know that. Look. That. And that, what about the victims? It's so preposterous. How do you begin to sponsor criminals for foreign education? Yes. Soldiers have died needlessly. Their families are in the lurch, as it were. No compensation for them, no welfare for them. And then you turn around to say, you're sponsoring criminals 
you know, foreign education for them. Then why am I law abiding? Why should I be law abiding? And then look at these jokers at the National Assembly. You want to buy a car, 4 million naira, 40 million. 40 million. 2020 Cameroon, in, in a country where 98 million people are living in extreme poverty, Imagine if we broke down that 40 million per senator or per lawmaker into how many families? Mm -hmm. How many startups can we have from 40 million era? I mean, I mean yeah, you, said, you, said, just... you said a lot, but I, what, where, I, where I want to take oh it from gosh. is what Libros was basically gosh. saying, that the time for us to hold them accountable, time to be interested in what they're doing is now. The fact that we can't keep lots of things on the uh, front burner doesn't make me forget that they were doing a 37 billion naira renovation or yes. the dollar am yes. i losing sight yeah. of the house the same house of assembly so yes. it's like they're pushing all the wrong buttons so clearly they're not there to serve us we need to be able to say look all these bills which one has worked in our favor you have the hate speech bill which we <laughs> we all shouted against you have the rehabilitation bill billion, you know yes, you have all yes. kinds of crazy things nah, coming out you one. have the camry <laughs> you know push so so what is it that you're really doing that we can say, oh, these people are fighting for us. I even want to take it from something that you said about what they are going to breed. I mean, in the world of okay. comics, for okay. example, they are called vigilantes, and eventually they are going to build vigilantes who will be determined to bring these people to justice, right? And I like the fact that in the world community today, you see a lot of leaders who are called to justice for all the horrors, because this is... This, war crimes. Yeah, these are war crimes to humanity, you cannot send murderous, I'm sorry to use the word to, to school you, abroad. To school abroad. Like, like you said, yeah, there. victims, when victims people who there. have gone to school with no provision, you have not provided, <laughs> yes. they've gone to school, they have scholarships, they can't, I know somebody, for example, who is in the UK, who was supposed to get a scholarship from the government, right? And is presently begging around for people to pay the school fees because the scholarship never came. Never, never came, came yeah. yes. Um, yeah, but there's so many in Scotland yeah, like that. Have Nigerians have them. And, and now you want to sponsor yes. criminals? I'm sure it's the, it's the scholarship that Buhari stopped, uh, that Jonathan told to go ahead uh, for some students, who it turned out that a huge majority of them just turned out to be Igbos. And so when, this when Buhari came students. to power, yes. he said, why, why is it that you have a scholarship scheme for 40 people? They're all Igbos. And he said, we have to redo it in national character. But meanwhile, oh, it was actually joking. done. I no, meanwhile, it was actually happened. done as an open, let's yes, call it an open tender based. first. Yeah. And then people came forward. I'm sure so some people came from Katsina as well. It. Yes. They didn't get the scores. And then all of a sudden, these guys have gotten oh, it. Instead of you to just let it. It was a very funny thing. Is they are in, they've already been enrolled to and these schools. They've already schools. been enrolled to They've signed what, legal documents. I mean, and and now you have people's children owing close to £34,000 for school fees with no means of paying them. Yeah, no means. Stranded in, yes. in, Scotland. Stranded in another yes. country. Because yeah. people have even argued. But, sorry, you can but, but what I was going to say, which is a bit of what Jide has said, is that there's a very, very strange madness that's coming from a clique of people that have come into power with Buhari. It's a very strange thing. And the, this country hasn't seen this level of madness before where things are just happening and it's like it can be true like this can be true that terrorists can are going to really go abroad doing to this? school yes. yes yes we've never seen this sort but of it's thing like they before don't, they don't seem to care what we it say they they what's gone. Something, yeah. something has gone very very wrong with a set of people that came with him and that's why you find that that i can tell you authoritatively that everywhere now go, the, nowhere is safe again and the only way we can correct this thing That's is to go I'm back sure. to our elections and our electoral processes mm. to ensure that you know you are able to vote in the right people. If until you do that, these people are I just going to be I think we should be, be more interested now in those who are in the yes. legislature. No more just everybody, focusing on president. Everybody, everybody, that legislature everybody. have the power everybody. to everybody. make How do we vote in? Make. How do we vote in the right people? No, we we need to put to ourselves forward to be in the legislature. Yeah, yeah exactly. Put ourselves forward to be in the legislature. We have to be very intentional about it. Yeah, and you know, persistent. Yeah. Half a word is enough for the wise. Time to add your words to us to make us wiser. On what's the value of the Nigerian life, Baba Tunde or Debeyi says the advocacy intro is well articulated and very informative. However, I disagree with the general consensus as repeated by the panelists that the Nigerian life means nothing. In my own candid opinion, the value of the Nigerian life means less than nothing. 
And the unfortunate thing is, if things continue to go on like this, it's only going to get worse. And the climax of it is going to be a hyper aggra aggravation of every misdemeanor we experience today in Nigeria. From armed robbery to wanton killing by terrorists and the ruthless mayhem by the headsmen, to say the least. Sadly, the millions of gullible people who have been cultivated as slaves through hunger, ignorance, or at least a dysfunctional education who cannot be bothered by reason to hold their leaders accountable, will ultimately be compelled by the aggravated hunger and wanton suffering to avenge their mistreatment of the ruling class. This is called the revenge of the poor. Wow, what a bleak prognosis, Baba Tunde. Hope you are not among those who cannot be bothered to hold their leaders accountable, though, because I, I want you to you know, hold them accountable. Also, on the value of the Nigerian life, Idowu Odunayo Martin says, nobody will give us anything on the platter of gold. To get something, we have to fight for it. If Nigerians are not ready to fight for a better country, then we don't deserve it. What's the essence of life spent in poverty and insecurity? Thank you for your contribution. Food for thought, anyway. Do keep your comments coming on Facebook, plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram, plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up on previous broadcasts, go to our website, plus TVAfrica.com, for slash The Advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, plus TV Africa. After the break, Ekene says, I will live and not die. Maybe that's not from our church. How about Ekene? You don't reach that point. You don't reach your Libby. After the break, I'll tell you more. The fight for life can be selfish or selfless. Which side of the battle line are you on? I will live and not die. That's the topic for today. I marvel at the enormous lust for life among our people, even in the midst of crushing pressures. Is this not why we've earned the reputation for being hustlers? Whereas in time past, the song of some in the midst of life's oppression had been, swing low, sweet chariot, coming forth to carry me home. Whereas faced with similar or worse challenges, our people declare like the violent who take it by force, I shall live and not die. No weapon fashioned against us or against me shall prosper. Yet, is it not possible that this our desperation to survive at all costs has indeed cost us the dignity that makes life worth living? So, I ask, is it ever a do or die affair? The trending news and fears associated with coronavirus begins to expose this, as did Ebola some years back, whereby some people were said to have died from panic, some resorting to drinking and bathing in salt water in a desperation to save their lives than were killed by Ebola infection. Is it this lust for life that often makes us put self first and cut corners in the race to live because we have accepted the lie that it is do or die? We complain and point the finger at government, and yet four fingers pointing back at us brings to mind the times we've given an accepted bribe, cheated in exams, taken money for work we did not do, inflated the price of goods or services, made promises we failed to keep. Now, that's a popular one. Look the other way rather than challenge wrongdoing all in the bid to uphold our personal anthem of I will live and not die. I being at the center of that statement, never mind anyone else. Yet we say, this na I no go go and key myself. Exactly why any talk of revolution is destined to be dead on arrival. It's high time we were prepared to suffer loss rather than sacrifice our honor. Suffer loss rather than sacrifice our fellow man. Suffer loss rather than renege on our word. Essentially what I'm advocating for is a nation of people who live to uphold the honor of their word, the dignity of their fellow man, and stand up for what they believe in. By so doing, we would be truly living. I rest my case. Um, like, um, I think one of um, our viewers said, is your Debbie, that, you know, you, these things are intentionally orchestrated. They say a hungry man is an angry man. But here, what a hungry man does is to look for food from the next available means of getting that food, even if it means stealing it from his neighbor. Nobody is, you know, giving you any form of orientation of self worth That look, you are, you live and not die. We owe you this responsibility. You owe your, us your this. Your life is valuable. Your life is valuable. And, and so, it means nothing to anybody. And so what we all basically are doing now is living that societal life 
where to your tent, O Israel. How far I can survive on depends own. on me. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to bother myself about anything. Unlike the communal life that we're used to, where everybody takes care mm, of everybody. Mm. You know, until we return, I agree with you that until we return to those values of, look, we must stand up for that thing that is right and condemn what is wrong, we will not get anywhere. Look at what is happening in the political space. The president will do something that is that we couldn't take from our government in the last dispensation, but because you know he's from our part or he's uh, he has appointed one of our brother, we could swallow hook, line, and sinker all of those things. We won't condemn them, only to wait maybe to condemn some other person. So and so, for me, we need to rise up above all of those sentiments and begin to take those steps that will help us correct whatever situation we are in. You know what, Ekene? Religion is the opium of the people. And what I think um, worship centers have done in Nigeria is to step into the gap where we have failure of leadership. The people need hope. They need to know that they, in, in the midst of all this chaos and despondency, they will not die, that they will survive. So you find people repeating that all the time, you know, to be able to survive not just the traffic, the policies that the are injustice. not implemented, the mm. injustices, right, right. you know, people have to survive on something. And which is why, again, religion is being piped back to us as... as a sedative. A, not just a sedative, like, what is it called? Now, sham. Yeah, that's it's, true. It's another five, another five. My brother. <laughs> Preach on, sister. I, 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 Preach on, sister. You're really but has she finished? Have you finished your point? You I was waiting. I was just... <laughs> You, you want to yeah. I, I, both of you have said things that are very correct, but there's another angle I want us to look at, which is just right on, the right basic on. social angle of just being kind to one another and not just surviving, mm -hmm. which is a problem that I think both the institution and religion is in a way making worse mm. because we've grown into a community where we're hypocrites, where we want to do yes. what is right outside. So I'm a Christian, I don't sin. I'm, a Christ, I'm, um, I'm from this tradition, yeah. I don't do this, I don't do that. But you do it at the detriment of being wicked to your neighbor. Mm. So for example, he doesn't share we your, use the excuse the that humanity because you don't lost. come from my tradition or you are not a Christian, I cannot relate with you even at your time of need. Mm -hmm. I can't just be kind to you simply because you are a Muslim. I don't mix with this sort. But mm. even your religion, most religions say you should go and convert people. Mm. How can you convert people when you're not kind to them, when they cannot find humanity in you? Know, you? Yeah. you know. Which is another thing, another angle we need to look at it. We mm. should stop trying to survive based on tribe, race, or religion. But just try to survive That's based human, on being humanity. human beings human and showing compassion to one person. And if that person can learn compassion from your example, might be able to move it on to another, another person. And we all don't need to try and survive Which because we're each other's brother's keeper. Which is what our leaders do keeper. very well. Yeah. As in among but, themselves. They're, yes, they're among community. themselves. They they're do community. it very well. <laughs> but they will not want their followers to do it because right. if they, the followers start doing Unite. it, they are liberated. Mm -hmm. They are united. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's why Ribadu's son is getting married. You see all of them across party, across religion, across, you know, uh, culture. They all converge and they laugh. They throw banters. But meanwhile, if among the, those photographs, you see the common man who is hungry, who is able to buy two naira data, is quarreling on, oh, why will Oshiba job be laughing with right, uh, Atiku? Right, right. Can uh, you imagine that? You know, uh, until we understand it also from that point of view. I like that, your, your yeah. point. Because until actually, we understand you, you, you it, even will be united and, and, and condemn what it's condemned. But can the followership be ever yeah, but, united but quickly, in Nigeria? But quickly, I, I but quickly, religion, be, for the fact that they make so much money from disunited Nigeria and fear, they will not also allow it. Religion comes in to tell you, oh, now we're talking about coronavirus. Some people are already selling olive oil. Some churches are already selling olive oil. And the, the only way religions thrive virus. in Nigeria is to create fear around right. you, mm. and then they give a narrow opening that leads you to them. Right. And, and, and so with those fear, we are uh, uh, enclosed in our cocoon, and then you don't want to relate with that to your neighbor because he's oh, a Muslim. My pastor said 
that as a Muslim... You see that my pastor said is all over the place. Ah, like, nah. What do you say? The, the, do you not have a voice? Well, again, I, 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 sorry, I was just oh. going to quickly say, you know, there is true religion and there's, there's the fake one. And a lot of times people will still use whatever format you put on the ground to serve themselves. So what you're really looking for is like, those things that are obvious to you, like he said, loving your, your fellow man. Like, I'll yes, just give you a quick illustration. Yeah. I'm driving in traffic, everybody's yeah. hustling, and then I, I slow down and let people in. You know they're surprised. They're not expecting it. They're thinking I'm going to hustle for that little gap. And when I stop and I say go in, the man is relieved. Uh, you know, it's, it's a change, okay, of, I'm not it's a change of tempo. My younger brother said he was going for a church program, and what was humility was the topic the for this, mm. the theme. And then... While it's in traffic, there was this man who was busy. He, in fact, he was driving roughly. And, you know, like, oh, what was he? Who, is he? who is he? Only for them to get to the church. <laughs> I know. And the, the speaker, speaker <laughs> is this same man. Oh, and he's goodness. like, ah, what would this There's man no, teach me about humility? Right. He went away. Yeah, of course. I, I, I need to throw it's this in. Religion is not just only Christianity. Mm. I need to throw that in. Yeah, because he brought it People in cultural... worshipping, yes, if I... Mm. Yes. Yeah. Muslims. You can be right? critical yeah. about... As long as you're not using same. your religion to discriminate yeah. on mm. another human another being, yeah. I think yes. we'll all be better. Yeah. Half of our wars will be over. I think what it is is that power has gone... Is now held firmly in the hands of very, very few people mm -hmm. and very, very bad people. Mm -hmm. So there's very little. That's why we just want to survive. We feel powerless. And until you can prove that we're not powerless. I mean, if I'm powerless in a situation, truly, why would I waste my energy when I know I'm not up to the fight? I'll look for other ways. Nigerians are looking for other ways to survive. I, I, I was arguing that our, 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 true strength yeah, true. Is, our true strength is to choose to do the right thing, even in the midst of. That's, that's where the true, true strength and life lies. The fact that you oppress me, and yes, I can still show kindness to my fellow man, that for me is where true strength lies. Yeah. Well, in the meantime, you have to survive. Ekene certainly has a lot of fight in her. You could say she's a female crusader of a more equal society. I know, I certainly am. And um, I'll tell you more after the break. Treasure, I wouldn't be so quick to enlist me in your fight if I were you. Anyway, let's hear you out. Okay, oh, Comrade Ekene, power to the people. <laughs> <laughs> All right, time to say my piece. I'm talking about feminism of terms and descriptions. A recent incident involving a popular advocate for women and her denial of being a feminist prompted this piece. She had responded to an accusation by a man on a post she made with, I am not a feminist. A guy shared a post about sanitary pad from my page and left a one-liner, feminist. If it's any consolation, I was once in that loop. I said at a meeting outside Nigeria once that I am not a feminist but an advocate for women. And even now I can still see in my mind's eye the disapproving looks from those present and close enough to hear me. But then that was years ago. For the purpose of clarity, feminism and feminist movements have always been about women's rights. These are the rights to vote, to hold public office, to work, to earn fair wages, have equal pay with men for doing the same work, also known as eliminating gender pay gap. Others include the right to own property, receive education, to enter contracts, to have equal rights within marriage and have maternity leave. All these and more have to do with fundamental human rights. Just as Senator Hillary Clinton said 25 years ago at the Beijing conference, women's rights are human rights. So what is it about feminism many are afraid to identify with, even women? What is responsible for feminist fatigue and anti-feminist sentiments? The simple answer is patriarchy a social system that is oppressive to women, a social mechanism that reproduces and exerts male dominance over women. The instructive word is dominance now. What feminists do is reveal incidents of such dominance by critically analyzing its manifestations. Feminists are enablers of an equal world. They actively choose to challenge stereotypes, to fight bias and broadening perceptions, to improve situations and celebrate women's achievements. Gloria Steenham says, and I quote, the story of women's struggle for equality belongs to no single feminist, not to any 
one organization, but to the collective efforts of all who care about human rights. Feminists challenge instances of denial and abuse of fundamental human rights just because of biological makeup. And there are male feminists who do this along with women. Being a feminist is nothing to be afraid of. It's nothing to deny or not identify with. So as we celebrate International Women's Day, do what you can to make a positive difference in the life of one woman. Mm. Yeah. The problem Happy of um, feminism, feminist, is feminism itself. Okay. And, ah. not, and not a patriarchal world. I disagree completely. You know, I've had cause to interact with so many people who say they are feminist, feminist. But at the end of the day, you talk about feminist idea being a human right idea. It is. If we leave it at that, then everybody who pursue human rights is a feminist. Right. But you find out that we've had friends here who take it overboard and are antagonist to con contrary ideas. And so that's why for some women, Uche is not here, we probably would have had to contend with her. <laughs> and that's why for some of them, if that's what feminism is about, count me out. But if it's about human rights, equality, then I mean. Women's and, and rights so that's are why, human rights. And that's why I said it is the problem itself, it's feminism, because there's so much definition, so much confusion around it that some people claim to be feminist, they really don't understand what feminism is about. So, but you see some people, when you discuss these same issues, the way they take it, you know, so extreme that when you have comp contrary views, Quite. they are despicable, you are this, well, you see, yes. <laughs> Yes, you see, the thing is, let's forget such people because they exist. They are like the people who, when you say something about gay or not gay, they, they immediately You're go also mad. They're also <laughs> despicable. Yeah, you, if you just don't accept somebody to be gay, they go mad. What I find very surprising is, I, was no, I don't think I was ever aware that a, a woman was paid less for the same job oh, as a yeah. man. Oh, yes, yeah. oh, yes. Yeah. it's happened. It was a BBC, shock to me. I was going to say. At first, I thought, I, you know, I was arguing with someone and I said, look, there are problems with women. They might have to take time off, mm, children. So they step down the ladder and the guy moves ahead. And they less. said, no, 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 that's not what we're talking about. Mm. I said, so what are you talking about? It happens and they said, in some universities. Equal pay. And I said, but it will be equal if the job is equal. And, and they, they said, no. Can you imagine? And, 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 and even and in the UK. Absolutely. Yeah, in the UK, exactly. Or, or, or any, anywhere Surprise. that you would have thought was not possible. And that's when I started to realize that there was something serious going on. Because I can't imagine that I own a company or be in charge enough to set salaries. And I willfully, you know, just because she's a create woman. that gap. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. I, I pay and women it, more. Sorry, I, it, it, I, I want to quickly just, you know, be for and against feminism, mm -hmm. right? Feminism, feminism so you're is, going to be a devil's advocate. Yes, <laughs> it's very necessary in a male-dominated world that right. we have today. And when we have injustice, like what you mentioned about yeah. women being paid less, mm -hmm. right? So it's good if we have movements like the feminism movement to push equality, right? right. The problem with it today, and you see it in everything, even in, it, in entertainment, is that trying to raise women up, they've decided to bring men down. And that's where the real problem that, that's was. Exactly. Start, that's right? where I say this is what you role say. playing. You watched all the movies today where you find that woman is strong, everybody that is stupid or bad <laughs> is a man. Is a man. Right? right? And it goes on even into children's cartoons. What we're missing is we're now affecting the psychology of men to not even carry out the roles that they should mm. carry out naturally yeah. in the society. And this is all because of the feminine feminist movement no, no. that's why some women will tell you count me out if this is what is about will be such will be will be a lot worse if we have men who don't know what they're doing mm. and women who know what oh, they're that's, doing that's so why don't we push that you will not have many quality yes. why don't we push strong men <laughs> yeah strong women mm. in an equal environment and, and, and this is where i come Wait, sorry, sorry allow me to allow me to come in no, it is. but, but, to but come you know what a feminist about to get married she will accept to be paid for as a bride price for instance, some, I mean, some may not, so, some, so, some may not, some may not. They will fight but let, let me come in. Let me just make this point. That's an interesting point. Yeah. No, yes, quickly, that, no, no, quickly. They that's want to marry, so they will say, no, okay, so just for the wedding, they will do it. So that you can take all of to this. To me, you shouldn't you do it try. at all. Okay. And that's why you see, and that's where some women will tell you, if this is what feminism is about, to put the man down so that I can be up, count me out. But if it's about equality, 
then count me in. That's yeah. where the that's why I said the problem of feminism it's, is feminism. The femi okay, and then just to come in, and it looks or like you know ones. again, yeah. I, I I definitely I find that a lot of times no if, if you're dealing definition. with if you're dealing with issues that matter to women, a lot of times you take them individually. I'm for them. I usually don't want to see a woman. See, I, I'm coming. Let me let me land my point. Binary. No, I'm well, I'm coming. Don't don't read into the language. <laughs> just take the gist of okay. what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. If if there's a the topic that comes up now, because I'm always I feel I'm instinctively drawn to the underdog. So if there's something, if someone's being oppressed, someone's being, you know, essentially treated yeah. bad, yeah. instinctively I'm for that person, whoever that person is. Yeah. You yeah. Know? But what I find is common to human beings is that human beings will oppress. Today, it may be the black man being oppressed because he's in a position of disadvantage. But that same black man, you'll find me, you know, like what you saw in South Africa with the xenophobia. O so I am not for anybody. Man. In that sense, I'm for everybody and I'm for nobody. But I'm for people who, at that point in time, <laughs> like, when they're being oppressed, <laughs> I'll key into that thing. But I'll never go and sign up for life and say, I'm your paddy. Because tomorrow, I know that if you were in that... Women, I've seen women oppress women more than men, yeah. you know, because they suddenly had some power. Yeah. I've seen those kind of dynamics players, and I'm like, I'm not signing up to any And that woman will tell you she's a like, feminist. Mm, I, I, sometimes feminists are even the worst. But I say to myself, no. I know that women are being oppressed, and I hate to hear about it when I see it in the home or wherever. So whenever they're doing individual movements, I join. But the minute they start trying to make a blanket movement, I opt out because I say well, I can see where I can see where the problems will come. A well, feminist having a house help. No, and say you treat a woman, not a feminist. No, no, no. She says she's a feminist. This, a this woman well, in church who preaches women right, feminism, and the rest. And maltreating a young small girl that is staying with her, who is even younger than her own daughters. That's the human and, you know, thing and then for the you. way, if you see the slap she gave this child, wow. the young girl because she couldn't do sign of the cross, and I was like, <laughs> and this <laughs> is somebody's daughter, yeah. and you are a woman, mm. and you're bringing up, you bring up your own. They are looking different and distinct, and you know, and then tomorrow you can't preach. Feminism yeah. to me. Yeah. Okay, I just want to say that different layers of feminism. You've talked about the LGBT, mm. yes. Over the years, let's rewind. There had to be a movement. Yes. Let's not no, forget that, that life had not always been as no. it is now. Yeah, it was very... So there was a need for some for women to come together to be a force to yeah. push yeah. for some of these rights that I vote. highlighted. Yeah. At some point, women couldn't vote. Yeah. They had to come together that we have a right to vote. Yeah. And that's how some of this, this movement but starts. Some of these women so, now so, are missing it. Like Jide has said, they now see it as... Bring the men bring down. Bring the men down. down uh, bring the women so maybe up feminism and put the should men evolve down. now. Feminism should evolve. Go back to it's, the natural it, it reason does. for it. And then we'll all be in, in, it, in, in it. I think it, feminism is feminism is alive. See, it's to even living. Us. No, no, no. No, because I, I <laughs> wanted to get my... No, it's not a movement. Right. It's some of the people <laughs> in it feminism. that I suppose yes, it are is. the problem. Feminism. The movement itself is not... <laughs> the people are not the movement. So maybe, you, are, you see, you're complaining too much about the people. Yes. That's what it is. It so is the people five, that five, make five, up... Five. It is yeah. the people that make up the movement. It, it, no, no. Chuka. I think there needs to be a clear idea. They may not even understand their own movement. I think you should just stand down the The movement cannot exist in vacuum. I it can't just be there. The movement needs to have That's a why clear we have definition. the he for yes. she. Is it we about equality yes. or oppression? Yes. Right. People need to be sure that it's about equality. But, but it, it is. Why, why not just deal with then, equality? Then it's that we it's about equality. Sure that people who don't understand that it's about equality need to get then, out then the of the way. So I think the people, if it's about equality, then they have should a clear fight the people who are oppressing even among their ranks. Yes. Exactly. Uh, good. Good. Yes. 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 Like any other yes. movement, yes. like any yes. other yes. organization. Yes. But yeah. when everybody Mine parades is just do it on a case by case basis. Don't when everybody then right. you exactly. get more subscribers. Right. You parade yourself as feminist <laughs> and then right. you oppress yourselves. And, <laughs> case by case. Right. We advocate to win hearts and minds towards the fight for a better society. Continue to advocate with us on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag the advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa. Hashtag the advocating G. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com forward slash the advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Make it a date with the advocate next week, same time, same channel, and together, let's continue to make the world a better place. Bye bye. Adios. <laughs> five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country 
when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.